Good evening, Clarice. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 horror movie examples of the Mandela Effect. Come on, do you want to see my new chainsaw and hockey mask? For this list, we're looking at details from scary films that are commonly misremembered. Did any of these Mandela effects fool you? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. He's alive! Frankenstein. There have been many tellings and retellings of Mary Shelley's classic novel Frankenstein, but the 1931 film adaptation is still considered to be one of the best adaptations of the tale. In a very memorable scene, Dr. Frankenstein raises his monster's lifeless body into a lightning storm. Once it reanimates, he yells an iconic line. But it may not be the line you remember. Many people thought that Frankenstein yells he's alive, but the doctor actually uses the pronoun it. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Oh, in the name of God! Now I know what it feels like to be God! While it may seem minor, the distinction shows that Frankenstein truly sees his creation as a monster instead of a human being. This clever little detail definitely deserves to be remembered accurately. It understands this time. It's wonderful. Frankenstein, Frankenstein, where is it? Where is it? Number 19. Eating Worms. The Lost Boys. During the scene where the vampiric David and his friends share their Chinese food with Michael, fans remember that the noodles turn into writhing worms. The cheeky bloodsucker follows up that shocking moment with the line, How do you like your worms, Michael? But would you be surprised to know that David never says that line? Instead, Michael's container of rice briefly turns into maggots, and David asks, Maggots, Michael. You're eating maggots. How do they taste? But we don't blame fans of this classic for mixing up the details. At a later point in the scene, Michael does briefly see a box of noodles as worms. Bon appetit. They're only noodles, Michael. <laughs> That's enough. Number 18. A Not So Bloody Affair The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. If you've seen the original installment of this classic horror franchise, you might remember it as a bloodbath filled with gruesome death scenes. That's crazy! You don't gotta make this stop! Please! And you would definitely be right about the murderous aspects, but there's less blood than fans might expect. While characters certainly meet violent ends, very little blood is shown throughout the film. In fact, director Toby Hooper hoped implying instead of showing violence would lead to the film getting a PG rating. Unfortunately, the plan majorly backfired, and the film got an initial X rating before editing allowed it to get an R. It's ironic that reducing the amount of blood caused so much trouble for this violent film. I'll get away. <laughs> Are you sure? Number 17. Goodnight Kiss. Child's Play. Who was brave enough to kiss Chucky? There's a lot of confusion about one scene in this film. Many viewers remember a scene where Andy's mom Karen kisses her son goodnight. The boy then asks his mother to kiss Chucky, too. Others remember that the aunt was the one to show a sign of affection to the doll. But neither scene made the cut. Hi, I like to be hugged. Good. I'd love to hug you, too. While there are moments when both Maggie and Karen tuck Andy into bed, they never added a Chucky goodnight kiss. Fans who really want to see this unsettling moment play out can still get their wish. Jill's gonna be in in a while. Don't forget Chucky. In Curse of Chucky, the doll finally gets his goodnight kiss. Number 16. Feeding Tube, The Exorcist. This horror classic has many memorable and frankly disgusting scenes. But one aspect of those moments has resulted in a Mandela effect for many viewers. When thinking back to the moments leading up to Reagan losing her lunch in front of Father Karras, do you remember a feeding tube? Well, then let's introduce ourselves. I'm Damien Karras. And I'm the devil. Now kindly undo these straps. If you don't, welcome to the Exorcist Mandela effect. It's hard to explain why so many horror fans can't recall the tube in question. But to be fair, a lot is happening in this very famous scene. A feeding tube isn't necessarily the detail that sticks in your mind as you watch a 12-year-old girl prepare to utterly gross a priest out. Your mother's in here with his cars. Would you like to leave a message? I see that she gets it. Number 15. Leading Man. The Fly. It's impossible to think of this movie and not recall its memorable ending scene. A housefly with scientist Andre Delam's head and arm is trapped in a spider's web, screaming for help. Help 
don't worry, that's not a false memory. But some people do misremember the actor who plays Andre. Over the years, many have claimed that horror icon Vincent Price was the film's leading man. However, he played the scientist's brother-in-law. The Fly did help Price's horror career skyrocket, and he did feature as the same character in the film's sequel, Return of the Fly. But it was actor David Hedison who played the ill-fated scientist in the original film. Doesn't sound possible, does it? But it is true. It is impossible. You're playing some joke on me. Number 14. No Chainsaw? The Friday the 13th franchise. This one has become a slasher film trope, especially in parodies of the genre. Mike, do you want to see my new chainsaw and hockey mask? Ah! The scary killer wears a hockey mask and wields a chainsaw. But would you be surprised to learn that in 12 films with Jason Voorhees, not once does he use a chainsaw? Most frequently, he's seen with a machete. But Jason has also used an axe, a buzzsaw, and even a sleeping bag to claim his victims. Ironically enough, at least two characters have tried to use a chainsaw against the hulking villain. Some suspect that the hockey mask and weapons combo is a conflation of Jason and icon Leatherface. Given how strong and durable Voorhees is, writers probably thought giving him a chainsaw would just be overkill. <laughs> Number 13. I want to suck your blood. Dracula. Ask anyone to do an impression of Dracula and they will inevitably say Bela Lugosi's famous line in an exaggerated Transylvania accent. It'll sound something like, I want to suck your blood. The trouble is that Lugosi's character in the definitive 1931 classic never utters this line. And when looking at other serious depictions of Dracula in film, that quote doesn't come up. While it's unclear when people started saying it, the biggest suspect is the film Ed Wood. During the film, a character pretending to be Lugosi's Dracula speaks the famous line. Oh, now I can see it. Uh, I want to suck your blood. I want to suck your blood. His lack of a V sound still leaves the mystery open. But no matter where this piece of dialogue came from, it's a safe bet that intimidating vampires won't repeat it. Your will is strong Van Helsing. Number 12. Take My Strong Hand, Scary Movie 2. Viewers have been misquoting this one for two decades. In this horror movie parody, Hansen, the caretaker, has one hand with visible anomalies that is played up for laughs. The biggest joke comes when a character named Dwight is left hanging off the side of a building on a candle structure. When Hansen shows up, he offers the hand with the deformity, which the distressed man refuses to take. Many remember the caretaker insisting that Dwight should take his strong hand, but Hansen doesn't say that at all. Oh, give me your other hand. Oh, my other hand isn't strong enough. You take my little hand. No. However, viewers weren't completely wrong about the quote. There is a scene earlier in the movie where Hansen refers to his smaller hand as his strong hand. Woo, that's heavy. I better use my strong hand. Number 11. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Jaws. Even though it's universally considered one of the most iconic lines in movie history, this one is often misquoted. After being stunned by seeing the shark for the first time, viewers remember Roy Scheider's character saying, we're gonna need a bigger boat. Turns out that's not exactly the line. Brody actually says, you're gonna need a bigger boat. We're not sure why so many insist they recall hearing Weir. To make matters worse, people also remember the film's memorable movie poster with a bite taken out of the J in Jaws. However, that's also a false recollection, as the letter always appears whole. What do we get right about this classic film? Why are you son of a <laughs> Number 10. Speaking his name five times. Candyman. Candyman, 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 Candyman. Candyman. Legend has it that if you look into a mirror and say Candyman five times, the Candyman himself will appear. Or was the legend say Candyman three times? Candyman. 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 The release of the 2021 film Candyman, a spiritual successor to the 90s film of the same name, had some people questioning whether or not the famous horror antagonist's calling card had been changed. While some remembered that the correct number of times to say his name was five, others insisted that it had once taken fewer words to conjure up the hook-handed ghost. And if you look in the mirror and you say his name five times, he'll appear behind you, breathing down your neck. You want to try it? 
It's possible these people were confusing the legend of Candyman with similar repetition-based spirits like Beetlejuice or Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. Christy, I said that three times now. Mm. Number 9. What's the title again? Interview with the Vampire. I want you to see we get started. So, what do you do? I'm a vampire. If you've ever Googled Anne Rice's 1976 vampire novel or its film adaptation, you may have noticed that several of these suggested searches word the title as Interview with a Vampire. Given the prominence of this phrasing, you may be surprised to learn that this is not actually the title. The film and book are actually titled Interview with the Vampire, and always have been. The world changes. We do not. Therein lies the irony that finally kills us. This is a pretty minor mix-up, all things considered, but one that many fans of the book and movie take as proof of the Mandela effect. This misconception even permeated the press for the 1994 film adaptation, with the Oscars, Tom Cruise, and even Anne Rice herself referring to the film with the incorrect title. I just, I just decided it would be fun to do it, so I wrote a short story called Interview with a Vampire. Number 8. Freddy's Phone Call – A Nightmare on Elm Street What you dream? I dreamed about a guy in a dirty red and green sweater. If you thought Freddy's sweater looked a tiny bit different over the years, you're not wrong. The original outfit in the 1984 film lacked the stripes on the sleeves that appeared in later movies. However, the biggest discrepancy comes with the phone call. When Freddy is messing with Nancy, many remember him calling her a certain B-word before she drops the phone. But the Nightmare Demon only uses gentlemanly language here. Horror fans might have subconsciously added the word after watching the Rick and Morty parody Freddy character named Scary Terry. Not only does the animated character rely on one curse a lot, but other characters comment on his dialogue. Buckle up, bitch! <laughs> Man, he sure says bitch a lot! You can run, but you can't hide, bitch! Number 7. So Scared – The Blair Witch Project the Blair Witch Project took found footage horror to the next level, listing its actors as missing or deceased during its marketing campaign. The gimmick was a success, with many moviegoers leaving theaters unsettled by the film's dubious reality. In one of the film's most memorable moments, one of its characters, Heather, looks at the camera and delivers an emotional monologue, saying, I am so so sorry. However, many instead remember this line as I am so scared. The misconception is perhaps because she goes on to say that she's scared to open or close her eyes. I'm scared to close my eyes. I'm scared to open them. It's only compounded by the scary movie parody of the scene. I'm so scared right now. Number 6. I See White People – Scary Movie one of the films parodied in the first scary movie is M. Night Shyamalan's The Sixth Sense. I see dead people. The parody scene references the big twist from the 1999 film, with Marlon Wayans' character telling his friend, I see dead people. I see dead people? Man, this shit is awesome! Yo, son, you gotta roll some more of that shit up. It's a weak joke simply repeating the line from The Sixth Sense. Some fans, however, remember the scene differently, believing Wayne said, I see white people, a line that better fits the comedic franchise. Yo, son, it's like I've seen this all before. They had a killer at your old high school, shorty? Nah, it was in this movie Scream. Same dialogue and everything. Oh. This is ill. There is no evidence that this alternate line ever existed in the film, however. It did exist elsewhere, though. Billy Crystal said it at the Oscars before Scary Movie's release, and it appears in 2002's Undercover Brother. I see white people. It's too much! Too much! Caucasian overload! Caucasian overload! Caucasian overload! Have we jumped realities, or are some fans just mixing up memories? Number 5. Seeing the Baby – Rosemary's Baby ah! Rosemary? Go back to bed, you know you're not supposed to be up and around. A number of horror films thrive on tension, slowly building up to a big reveal or jump scare. 
Rosemary's Baby certainly creates a tense environment for both its viewer and protagonist, but declines to deliver on that big reveal. Where is it? Hmm. There were complications, Rosemary, but nothing that will affect future births. It's... Dead. Although the film centers around the horrific pregnancy of Rosemary Woodhouse and ends with her child's birth, the full baby is never actually shown on screen. There is a flash of demonic eyes during the film. However, that haunting image is largely believed to be the representation of the devil. Either way, reports of seeing the baby's face or hooves were greatly exaggerated. The viewer has to fill in most of the terrifying blanks on their own. No! Number 4. Do you want to play a game? Saw. Saw is known for its intense, torture-based horror. And at the center of it all is a white-faced puppet named Billy. Hello, Amanda. You don't know me, but I know you. I want to play a game. Acting as a way for the antagonist, John Kramer, to communicate with his victims, Billy gives characters the option to subject themselves to excruciating pain or face certain death. These options are referred to as games, but contrary to popular belief, Billy doesn't ask whether his guests want to play. In the original Saw film, Billy never says, do you want to play a game? But instead, I want to play a game. I want to play a game. Here's what happens if you lose. It's a simple change, but one that definitely changes the tone. Hello, Mark, Paul, Amanda, Zep, Adam, Dr. Gordon. I want to play a game. Number 3. Spike vs. Stripe – Gremlins In 1984, Gremlins introduced the world to the Mogwai, a fictional species that appeared cute and harmless but came with an important set of rules. Owners could not expose the creature to light, allow it to get wet, or most importantly, feed it after midnight. Predictably, these three rules are broken over the course of the film, unleashing reptilian gremlins on the town. <laughs> The leader of the gremlins, and the film's main antagonist, is a gremlin with a mohawk named Stripe. Although some fans would argue you on that name. Hey, look at that one's got a cute little stripe on its head. <laughs> some claim that the antagonist's name was once Spike, a misconception that can be found not only among Mandela Effect believers, but many merchandise listings featuring the character. Number 2. Hi Honey, I'm Home, The Shining Honey, I'm Home is a popular phrase utilized throughout pop culture in family films, sitcoms, and even songs. Hi, I'm home and have all day. The line is turned on its head in The Shining when Jack Torrance says it prior to breaking through the bathroom door with an axe. Or at least it would be if Jack actually said it. Wendy? I'm home. A number of people online seem to remember the line being a direct riff on the typically cheery phrase. But in reality, Jack actually says, Wendy, I'm home, using his wife's name rather than the generic honey. Here's Johnny! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Hello, Clarice. The Silence of the Lambs Good morning. Whether you've seen The Silence of the Lambs once or have seen it 20 times, you're probably familiar with the line, Hello, Clarice. Hannibal Lecter's creepy greeting is one of the film's most famous lines, inspiring memes and adorning t-shirts. But what if we told you this line doesn't actually exist in the film? That's right, Hannibal Lecter never once says hello Clarice in The Silence of the Lambs. The closest he gets is... Good evening, Clarice. It's unclear how so many people got mixed up about this line. Maybe it really is proof that we're now living in an alternate reality. Silence of the Lambs. Hello, Clarice. It's good to see you again. Did you enjoy this video? 
check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.